So doing these things is so easy. So this is exactly what they have done. They have picked up half my sentence and presenting to the world as though I am saying that every Muslim should be a terrorist. So what happens that this is how the media tries to malign people who are popular and are trying to spread peace. And I am aware that there are certain young Muslims in different parts of the world who are being misguided by certain elements. And they have been told that you should spread terrorism, it will be good for you, it is good for the religion. My speeches actually prevent such misguided people to go on the wrong path. In fact, I am very unequivocal that Quran says clearly in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 32, that if anyone kills any other human being, whether it be Muslim or non-Muslim, unless it be for murder or for spreading corruption in the land, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. And if any person saves any other human being, it is as though he has saved the whole of humanity. So Quran is very much clear and unequivocal that killing any innocent human being is as though you have killed the whole of humanity. And I said this many times that any Muslim killing any innocent human being, whether it be a Muslim or non-Muslim, it's totally unacceptable in Islam. So another statement which came into limelight and created quite a few disturbances was the Sunday Times alleges that you support Bin Laden and you blame George Bush for the 9-11 hijackings and call it an inside job. Sir, if you actually mentioned it, do you have any proof for such kind of a claim? These two statements have been taken from two different video clips of mine. And very often I'm asked by the questioner after my talk and by journalists that what are your views regarding Bin Laden. And I always say that if I have to give my judgment based on what I see in BBC and CNN, I'll have to agree that Bin Laden is a terrorist. But the Quran says in Surah Jurat, chapter number 49, verse number 6, that whenever you get a message, you check it up before you pass it to the third person. So based on this verse of the Quran, I cannot say anything, condemn anyone, unless I have got sufficient proof. Okay. So therefore I say, I don't know Bin Laden personally, neither do I consider him a terrorist, neither do I consider him a saint. I say, I don't know. And that the same question. Suppose the UK government today, if they arrest Bin Laden, and before he undergoes the trial, suppose they put him to trial in the High Court or the Supreme Court, and before the trial takes place, if the Home Secretary, Theresa May, she asks the judge of the High Court or the Supreme Court judge that what are your views regarding Bin Laden? Do you consider him to be a terrorist? What do you think will his reply be? But naturally he'll say, I don't know. He will say, let the trial take place. You right. place the evidence. I'll verify the evidence. I'll cross-examine. Let the cross-examination take place. Then I'll give my verdict because he is a responsible person. He cannot just say, okay, fine. I have seen on BBC. I have seen on CNN. Why should there be a trial? Let's put him to gallows. In a democratic country. So this is how a person who is responsible, who has a very high post, will behave. And this is exactly what I do. Because I know I've got more than 100 million people following me. I've got a large friendship. I cannot say anything. So when I say I don't know if the Home Secretary is condemning me, so tomorrow if they arrest Bin Laden, and before the trial takes place, if the Supreme Court judge says, I don't know, I think she'll even deport him, saying that why is he supporting Bin Laden? He's not supporting Bin Laden. This is how a logical person, because in democracy you have to give everyone a chance. So I'm not saying Bin Laden is a terrorist, neither am I saying he's a saint, I say I don't know. At the same time, those people who have sufficient proof, and those people who are convinced with the proof, if they say, fine, they can say, but why should I repeat? Why should anyone force some of their thought down my throat? So just because I say I don't know, that does not mean I'm supporting Bin Laden. Okay. But in the same breath, I also say, whoever has done the 9-11, Whoever the person is, that person is to be condemned. And that person is wrong. Whoever has done the 7-7 bombing in London, where more than 50 people were killed, he is to be condemned. Whoever has done the serial bomb blast in Bombay on 11th of July, where about 200 people were killed, those people should be condemned. I am condemning the act. I cannot take the name because I don't know who did it. Regarding the second part of the question that I have said that 9-11 was an inside job, 
done by George Bush himself. This is in reply to a question that was asked to me after one of my talks that took place in 2006. The topic of my talk was, is terrorism a Muslim monopoly? And after my talk, there's a questioner who poses a question that do you consider 9-11 to be inside job? And in reply I said that there was an article that came in Times of India on the 7th of September 2006. The title of that article was 75 professors believe 9-11 was an inside job. Okay. And in the article was mentioned that 75 professors and scientists, they claim that 9-11 was an inside job and a few warmongers in the White House in order to invade and take possession of the oil rich countries have planned this. So it was a report that came in Times of India. And furthermore, there are many documentaries available like Loose Change, 9-11 Finite and many documentaries which give various evidences to prove that 9-11 was an inside job. And they say the way the building came down, the Twin Towers, as though dynamites were planted, it cannot be possible that the plane hits the Twin Tower and the fuel completely can let the building crumble down. Immediately after the 9-11 attack, the person who built the building, the engineer said, it's impossible. The temperature of the metal of the building to melt requires more than 2000 degrees centigrade. And the temperature of the fuel is hardly 800 to 1000 degrees. It can't be possible. Immediately, next day, he retracts his sentence and he says, no, it's possible. Another person who gives a similar sentence who does not retract, he is kicked off from the job. Many of the 75 scientists and professors, after they give this statement, they were sent on a paid leave. Okay. So when we see all these evidences, these evidences given by scientists and professors are more logical than what you see on BBC and CNN. Yet, I am saying they claim it was an inside job, not me. They claim it was done by White House. They claim it was done by George Bush. If you ask me, did George Bush did it? I will say, I don't know. Maybe he did, maybe he did not. I cannot hold him responsible. The same way as the news that I see against Bin Laden in BBC and CNN cannot make me condemn him surely that he's a terrorist. Similarly, when I see the documentary, which are much more scientific, much more logical than what evidence I see in BBC and CNN, yet, I do not say that George Bush did it. I say, maybe he did, maybe he did, I don't know. But I'm not saying... Yeah, but you do believe in the evidences being shown on television about I George Bush? I think they are more convincing okay. than the evidence showed against Bin Laden, yet I say, I don't know. Because to condemn anyone, I require solid proof. Otherwise, I am maligning a person. To praise a person is easy. Even if I, by mistake, praise a person, it's not a problem. But to condemn anyone or to speak against someone unless I have solid proof, the Quran doesn't give me permission. So what standards I use for Bin Laden, the same standard I'm using for George Bush. But on the other hand, there are many people in the world who have called George Bush as a terrorist. And Venezuela president, Betty Williams, the main Nobel Prize winner, Nobel Prize for Peace she got, George Galloway. So in that sense, there was a poll conducted in America where who should be the biggest terrorist. And they gave three options, Osama Bin Laden, Saddam Hussein and George Bush. And do you know in all the polls, George Bush won the polls lock stock battle. In one poll he gets 78%, some polls he gets 80%. Even the BBC conducted a poll. So, this is what is the opinion of the people and seeing what's happening. What I'm trying to say that why are they misquoting me? What I'm, I'm a man of truth. So, before I condemn anyone, unless I've got solid proof, I'll not condemn him. So, just because I say I don't know, that doesn't mean I'm supporting Bin Laden. So, another question which everyone wants you to answer is that it is said that Rahil Abdul Rahman Sheikh, who is actually the prime suspect, and he's been suspected of being the commander in series of the train bombings which happened in Mumbai recently, like some time back, spent much of his time in the IRF library before the attacks.
from where this link came up for point number 1 mm -hmm. i don't know whether rahil sheik was responsible for the serial train bus i don't know irrespective whether he was or not the claim in the media i am aware that some of the newspapers in india did say that rahil used to visit the library of irf the point to be noted that the irf library is a public library anyone is welcome good bad and ugly i personally don't know rahil sheik i don't even know whether he came to the library or not even if he did come or did not come even if he has attended if he has come to the library does it mean that he has been trained here if you see his past record surely he might have attended some school or some college or some university now in college and university they get direct instruction from the professors and teachers in a public library you don't get instruction you just come and read a book and go so if you have to blame out of the two a public library or a school or a college who will you blame more you will blame the school or the college i'm not trying to say that the school made him a terrorist so this is how the media projects okay. first of all i don't know rahil sheik personally i don't know whether he came to irf or not and if anyone comes to irf people are welcome good bad ugly all types of people are welcome and surely if they come to irf library they will come closer to the peace so just blaming because a person even if he visited that you know trying to malign that you know irf has though they don't say it but indirectly they hinting that as though he has been trained in irf okay this is how the media maligns without mentioning names okay so lastly a very important question the sunday times further claims that the american terror suspect najibullah zazi arrested last year for planning suicide attacks on the new york subway is said to have been inspired by your youtube services do you think your speeches can actually inspire people to commit any kind of crime firstly i do not know who najibullah zazi is i don't know him personally i don't even know whether he was planning to do some suicide attack or some bombing in usa i don't know him personally i don't even know whether he was inspired or not but if the report is saying that he was inspired yes my talks do inspire people towards the good and there are hundreds and thousands of people who have stopped having alcohol after hearing my talks have stopped having drugs have stopped doing a lot of promiscuity many many of my speeches have inspired hundreds and thousands of people towards the good regarding inspiring anyone whether it be najibullah as azazi or anyone else to commit a terrorist act or killing innocent human being is totally not acceptable or believable because in many of my talks unequivocally i have condemned terrorist attacks i have condemned terrorism and i have condemned violence and i have very often quoted the verse of the quran of surah maida chapter 5 verse number 32 it says that if anyone kills any other human being whether muslim or non muslim unless it be for murder or spreading corruption in the land it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity and if any person save the single human being it is as though he has saved the whole of humanity so quran is absolutely unequivocal and clear that killing any innocent human being is totally prohibited it is as though you have killed the whole of humanity so where is the question of my lecture inspiring anyone to kill innocent human being or conduct a terrorist attack and you may be aware that all the muslims 100% they believe and they respect prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam now suppose you find a muslim who is involved in some wrong activity or maybe involved in killing innocent human being or a terrorist attack you cannot say okay fine because he loves prophet muhammad he is inspired by prophet muhammad that's the reason prophet muhammad peace be upon him knows billah is responsible for conducting those evil acts fine he may be inspired by prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but he may not be following him 100% he may be following 10% 20% 50% the evil act is his responsibility you cannot blame that to prophet muhammad peace be upon him because never in any of his sayings in any hadith has he ever said that kill innocent human beings he never has promoted violence similarly in my speech never ever have i promoted violence never ever have i told people to do terrorist attacks it is in fact i am emphatic against violence and against terrorism but as you say people at times misinterpret to what you say that's i just to malign me because they know i'm popular so that they know that i'm spreading the truth and people are coming to my talks in large numbers and they're coming towards islam so those people who are enemies of islam they want to malign me so that they reduce 
my influence over the audience and throughout the world. I suppose sir, that's a great response to the allegation put in front of you. So I suppose Dr. Zaki Naik has responded to all the questions and allegations put in front of him. Thank you so much for your time, sir. It's my pleasure. That's all for now and have a great time ahead. Thank you so much.